Now it's late season in Wisconsin. We're in mid-December. Christmas time is coming. I'm actually have my first client trip uh, starting tomorrow. I visit usually about six, seven clients um, in seven or eight days every month through September, and that starts uh, tomorrow actually. So I'm starting to transfer into the habitat season. We still have some hunting to do. It's a great time of reflection. I reflect with my clients when I go see them. I see about 70 a year. I reflect with my friends, um, my hunting buddies, and of course, my wife and anybody else that's hunting with us, we always look back at the season. I'm sure you do too. And a lot of you right now are kind of shaking your head and wondering where all the deer went. And, um, and, and there's a lot of blame that goes around for that. There's some things I think you can directly control and, and really change for your future and for the future of your hunting, your land, your habitat, your hunting expectations, your herd and your herd makeup. We'll talk about that towards the end. But right now there's a lot of people that are mad at wolves, coyotes, the DNR, their neighbors. When we're up in the UP of Michigan where I used to live, they're mad at the sugar beaters. Those are the guys that bring, or the hunters that bring sugar beets up from lower Michigan. Trolls, because they live below the Mackinac Bridge. So we'll blame it on the trolls if we live in the UP. We'll blame it on the wolves up there, the cougars, everything. It's in anywhere around every state, you hear the same thing. There's a lot of blame that goes around and of course blaming the DNR. Too many deer, too few deer. As hunters, I believe, and I've experienced over and over again on my own properties and properties of my clients, properties of my friends, online, readers, viewers, there's so much as a hunter that you can control that you really don't have any idea that you can control because there's so much blame that goes around. There's sometimes a lot of negative negativity. I like to take a more positive approach. I know for a fact there's a lot more that you can control positively on your land and as it extends to your herd, your habitat, and your hunting expectations for next year. Doe permits and shooting antlerless deer. We'll just start there. You know, there's a lot of times I, and I'll give my own land for example, the property we had for 12 years, about 200 acres we looked at, if we had 25, 20 to 25 does and fawns out on our food plots every afternoon, and if you have consistent food, then you can really get a good grasp of how, of how many deer are on your property in October, November, because they're gonna be out there every single night. And if you have trail cameras and you're hunting near, you just add them up. Almost every deer in the woods, 95%, are going to be out in those major food sources every night, so it's really easy to get a number. We looked at on that property, that 30, 35 does and fawns, not counting the bucks that we would see, um, that was a good stable base. And so when we had 30, 35, we might shoot three to six does per year. When we had 20 to 25, we didn't shoot any does. When we had 40 to 45 a couple times, we ended up shooting up to 12 does at a time and nine does another time for the entire season. And at the same time, if we shoot all those does and the next year we don't have any, who do we have to blame? We have no one to blame but ourselves. The doe permits are a tool that the DNR gives you. You don't have to use them. Just because you have a hammer in your toolbox doesn't mean you need to bang something every day with it. And that's the same with a, a permit. We have some personal responsibility. There's a lot of hunters out there that they have doe permits, so they use them. And then when they don't have deer the following year, the next year, three years later, they blame the DNR because they gave out too many permits, including the ones that they used. And so there's a lot of blame that goes around. And when you're guesstimating how many does to shoot for the year, it's really important that you take into consideration what's going on around you. For example, on one property, we wanted to shoot five or six uh, does this year. We've already shot one. We plan to do a lot in the late season. And as it turns out, during the doe hunt, the annual doe hunt in Wisconsin, our neighbors shot seven. So we're taking a look at that number and drastically reducing the number of deer and number of does that we're gonna shoot on that property based on what's going on in the neighbors. That's a luxury you do not have during the early season. What I found in the UP of Michigan, this is back in 99, going back to 2000, I had property up there. Started managing that in 99. It was rare that I would go, I would actually walk on the sand trail, there's two and a half miles, I might not see a deer, uh, deer track for five days in a row. Very desolate, very few deer per square mile. Now over the next five years, I built it up to where I had, I saw five or six different eight points. It had nine to 10 mature does and one fawn typically per, per doe hanging around. Built it up to a pretty decent deer herd in an area where there weren't a lot of deer. I did that by having high quality food all hunting season long. Not great food, but it was enough to last. I had good cover and then I didn't overpressure the deer herd. So I found that even in the UP of Michigan in a very low 
year per century in an area where 50% of the fawns die every single year, in an area where there's huge winter die off. They've had die off in two years in a row that was 350,000 total just in two years in 95 to 97. So big winter kill areas, there's wolves up there, there's cougars now. And so I found even in an area like that, you could still be able to deer herd it. And I've seen that happen time and time again all across the north part of the country, let alone the central part of the country. In fact, a lot of people think that if you have QDM or you're practicing QDM, that you have to shoot all the does. And that could be further from the truth. We had an organization up in the UP of Michigan that was trying to pass an antler restriction QDM uh, proposal at the time. And this organization spread out a lot of bad press and, and basically lies that, that if we had QDM in that area and we had an antler restriction there after you shoot all the does, it was false, the DNR said so. But bottom line is, 2004, the Quality Deer Management Association actually gave me a, a, an award, their Deer Manager of the Year Award, and that was over the five-year makeup of my land. I actually published an article um, in the Quality Whitetails for the QDMA, and guess what? In that five years, I had shot zero does. I even published that in their magazine, published that right up. So just because you have QDM does not mean you have to shoot does. That is false. The national organization gave me an award for not shooting does and, and promoting, and not just for that, but for actually making a, building that deer herd in that, in that location and, and making a healthy herd and healthy balance. Just because you have permits doesn't need, mean you need to use them. Um, you really need to take a good reflection right now Look at the amount of pressure you placed on your land, what kind of food you had, what kind of cover you had. And if you look at that group right there, a lot of times when I'm analyzing a client parcel and there's no deer, we look straight to those three factors, hunting pressure, food, and cover, and the management of that hunting pressure, the management of the attraction. And you, look, you need to look no further as to why there are deer on the property or not. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of times I go to client properties in February and March, and there's deer tracks and deer beds and deer pellets everywhere feeding like this on all their plots. They had zero deer in December, and you just need to look back to the hunting pressure that was applied. So that's the way you can actually change the game for yourself. You can change the game regardless of what the DNR gives, regardless of the predators that are in your area. I've, I've lived in an area with wolves and uh, coyotes, and you hear up to five packs a night in those areas. You can build a deer herd. And deer quickly learn if your neighbor just a 40 acre parcel away is applying high pressure on their food plots and the way they hunt, ATV use, baiting, whatever it might be, that those deer quickly gravitate to your location as a daytime hangout. The daytime hangouts for deer, deer move very little during the daytime. You know, a buck might have a three mile home range at night, but during the day he might live within five, 10 acres the majority of the hunting season. So if you protect those core areas, you have food that lasts from August to January. It doesn't need to be there during the summer because great deer herds, great hunts are not built during the summertime, they're built during the hunting season. And if you have high quality stem count cover of a good diversity, it's not all conifer, it's not all shrubs, it's not all hardwoods, you have shrubs, briars, hardwood cuttings, conifers, you have a good mix of habitat. There's four different bedding types that deer need. Just real quickly, this is something I identified years ago and wrote about in Quality Whitetails. But you have grasses, briars, weeds, you have shrubs, you have conifers, and you have hardwood regeneration. So if you look at those four bedding types, if you have three out of four or four out of four on your property, you're gonna have enough cover. If you have quality food sources on your land, private parcels, of course, um, and then you manage that level of attraction, you're not spooking the deer off, guess what? You can build a deer herd even on 30 to 40 acres. I see clients doing it every year. That's the positive thing about this, it's fun. You can do it. There is a lot of positive energy from this and a lot of positive results that you can find. I see it time and time again. You get those three things to happen, low hunting pressure, food and cover. You can withstand any onslaught of does around your property, doesn't matter the number of permits and then you could stop blaming or hunters in general stop blaming the DNR, wolves, coyotes, the downstaters, the trolls, the sugar beets, sugar beaters, whatever it might be. There's a lot of personal responsibility that you can use with those doe permits. Analyze year to year if you even need to take a doe. Just because you're practicing QDM doesn't need to mean you need to take a, a doe out of the herd. And I think that there's a lot of positive fun with all this and hunting, and that's why I love visiting clients. I love the energy from the guys that I see and the hunters around the country. 
and I know it can happen. I know it can happen for you. Just need to work hard, and I hope you appreciate the content on this channel because we have a lot of strategies regarding this, and you can have a great hunt this next season.